डियर स्टूडेंट्स आज हम बात करेंगे आइडियल फर्मी गैस की लास्ट टाइम हमने पढ़ा था कि फर्मी डायराफ डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन क्या होती है उसकी लो टेम्परेचर पर इंटरप्रटेशन हमने की थी टी इज इक्वल टू जीरो कैलवन पे और टी इक्वल टू ग्रेटर दैन जीरो कैलवन पे भी हमने उसको देखा था कि वो कैसे वेरी करती है तो हमने ये ऑब्जर्व किया था कि टी इज इक्वल जीरो पे चूँकि वो स्टेप फंक्शन होता है लेकिन टी ग्रेटर दैन जीरो कैलवन पे वो एक डिफरेंट फंक्शन जिसे लॉजिस्टिक फंक्शन कहते हैं वो बन जाता है तो आज हम उसी डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन को लेंगे और कुछ फर्दर प्रॉपर्टी स्टडी करेंगे आइडिया फर्मिंग गैस की मैं जो लास्ट लेक्चर में फार्मूलाज थे वो मैं रिपीट करके लिख देता हूँ सो वी कैलकुलेटेड एवरेज नंबर ऑफ पार्टिकल्स और डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन दैट वॉज इक्वल टू वन ओवर ई टू द पार माइनस बीटा जे माइनस म्यू प्लस वन जबकि बीटा था हमारे पास वन ओवर के बी टी इसी तरह हमने ग्रैंड पोटेंशियल लिखा था That was equal to minus one over beta log of the grand partition function जबकि हमारे पास जो grand partition function itself था वो था वन plus e to the power minus जे माइनस म्यू सो हम इन्हीं इक्वेशन को कंटिन्यू करते हैं और हमें लास्ट टाइम लास्ट टाइम और कई दफा पहले भी इससे हम एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ एनर्जी कैलकुलेट कर चुके हैं और एवरेज वैल्यू ऑफ एनर्जी का फार्मूला ये था ई वॉज यूज टू पी एफ्सलॉन जे एन जे और इसको अगर हम कैलकुलेट करें फॉर द केस ऑफ फर्मी गैस हम इसको फर्मी गैस कहेंगे तो कलेक्शन ऑफ फर्मी पार्टिकल्स That would be epsilon j over e to the power so on and so forth. Is it the total number of particles? That is n. So we have to basically sum over all states. Average number of particles, and that we get sum over j. One over e to the power. माइनस म्यू प्लस वन सो हम बात कर रहे हैं जो कि आइडियल फर्मिंग गैस की तो हमारे पास जो एनर्जी स्पेक्ट्रम है फॉर फ्री फर्मी ऑन्स
we can write it as epsilon j as a function of k that is h cut square k square by 2m you can call this equation 6 and we have to take the log of the partition function equation 3 so log of partition function equals natural log of sum over j 1 plus e to the power minus beta epsilon j minus mu and this is a summation if you remember okay so I, I did not put a summation on uh, in equation 3 so let me put it there so that is a summation over j also in equation 3 so if we now want to convert it we want to convert log of z to an integral such that oh so and if you convert anything to an integral so summation over k f of k then you have to multiply it with some factor that is 1 over 2 pi cube d cube k f of k and this d cube k is actually volume element in k space so we just write the log of z in k space that would be equal to gamma times 1 over 2 pi q for conversion and I tell you what gamma is just for let me write this okay t t k cube log of 1 plus e to the power minus beta e minus mu gamma is actually our pin multiplicity that is usually 2 for fermion we will not uh, put the value here but just we keep this term with it okay so let me go back and remind you what was the volume element dk cube was d cube k okay this element here so if you remember this d cube k when we wrote density of states in the previous one of the previous chapters if you remember that the maxwell velocity distribution where we calculated so we started from writing density of states and from there we know that we knew that this was equal to 4 pi k square dk and if we now combine or put the value there back there in the upper equation so we have uh, log of the partition function we have 
gamma integral 4 pi k square dk over 2 pi to the power 3 log of 1 plus e to the power minus theta so if we write it like that then this thing here this thing this thing here which contains 4 pi k square dk over 2 pi cube we call this as our density of states in k space 4 pi k square over 2 pi cubed dk is basically our d of k dk that is density of states so this was our density of states in k space and when we wanted to convert it to energy space you know the formulas so what we did d of k to d of e so we just use this formula over 2 pi square so you'll have to go back there to get your idea there correctly df epsilon and here we actually use the that the function of uh, k that was uh, actually for free particles that is h cut square k square over 2m and we did okay d epsilon over dk So, and at the end of the day, at the end of the day, we get D of E equals V over M, uh, sorry, V times N divided by 2 pi square h cut cube 2 m epsilon to the power 1 half or you can write it like so you can separate the energy term so you can write it v m 3 half over 2 to the power okay 2 square root pi square h cut cube and epsilon one half or you can say this whole thing c c times epsilon one half so this is our value of density of states in energy representation We can call this equation 7. So let's go back and put the value of uh, this d of e in the log of partition function. So we get gamma times so we'll integrate from 0 to infinity 
p of e natural log of 1 plus e to the power of minus beta e minus mu p of e and now we know that we can calculate certain things from uh, using uh, these formulas so if you remember uh, we can calculate the average energy using the formula gamma times 0 to infinity d of e so we did these things in that chapter this uh, velocity distribution chapter n of e now so we can write uh, the uh, Fermi direct distribution as n of e now because we are using the functions of energy so that is n of e is 1 over e to the power beta e minus mu plus 1 so for your clarification and also the number of particles we can write this, this is gamma times 0 to infinity so we call this equation 8 here and that is okay we can call this equation 9 that is gamma times d of e times n of e de and let's go back to again uh, again to your equation for log of partition function and we just evaluate it we do we do the integrations so okay so i write it again so log of z equals gamma times c so actually i put the value of d of epsilon that is epsilon one half times log of one plus e to the power minus beta epsilon minus mu d of epsilon so you see here i put the value of d of epsilon in our original relationship here in this one that's it and now we integrate it we can integrate it by parts so we can take these two functions this and this and do the integration by parts so what we get log of c equals gamma times c epsilon to the power 3 half divided by 3 half so we take this as first function and keep the second function as such 1 plus e to the power minus beta e minus mu and put the limits 
here and minus and integrate the second one so we get 2 over 3 epsilon 3 half to the power minus theta epsilon minus mu over e to the power theta epsilon minus mu plus one times minus So after some rearrangements we get, so this first term in this integration, this term goes to 0 because uh, when we put epsilon 0 this whole term thing goes to 0 and if you put ep uh, uh, epsilon infinite so this term will be 0 and that is log of 1 and that would be 0. So we get log of c equals gamma times c so yeah, okay i rewrite this thing so we write 2 over 3 gamma c theta and the, the limit is okay So we can clearly write this as okay epsilon three half divided by e to the power theta epsilon minus mu plus one c f epsilon and okay we can further simplify it two over three gamma c beta equal to infinity epsilon three half and n of e t e we call this equation our next equation so actually we can do some rearrangements here so okay if we take c inside the integral gamma theta so that is c times epsilon one half time epsilon so we have uh, made the factors of epsilon to the power three half and n of epsilon c epsilon now we can write again this thing as c of epsilon so we get log of the partition function equals two over three gamma beta and this thing now has become a bit more interesting so this whole thing now including this factor uh, gamma so if we see uh, equation 8 so this is now our average energy of the system so what we get log of C equals so we can write this as log of 
B equal two over three E over K B T. This is our one relationship. And now we want to discover actually something different that is somehow relevant to the previous lecture. We want to discover now Fermi energy in terms of in terms of total number of particles so if you remember our equation for total number of particles that is uh, n was equal to n gamma times equation 9 so we'll use equation 9 and you you remember from last lecture that when we plot it n of e in terms of e so at 0k we saw that this function was kind uh, is a, it was a step function and e equals e s was the limit and before e is equal to e f all the states were filled and uh, beyond this there were empty states and we draw, uh, we wrote in only in form of n of e and e this time we will do a bit more modification so now what we do we calculate n that is equal to gamma E of E and E T e, e and we do it at zero K and we see that our N of E which is one over E to the power theta epsilon minus mu plus one this goes to one when t or beta t goes to zero or r beta goes to infinity so we will use this approximation and our integration limits in that case will change so our n would now be integrated from gamma times epsilon f the integration limits t of epsilon and we put the value of d of epsilon that is so we will integrate only to the Fermi level and we write okay c times epsilon one half d epsilon and what we get gamma c so here it is epsilon 3 half divided by 3 half 0 to epsilon f and we get gamma times c times epsilon f to the power 3 half and ok we write this thing before so we write 2 over 3 times gamma times c times epsilon to power 3 half and again we modify it so we write so okay we can first we can call this this equation our next uh, equation that is I think equation if we continue this terminology we will get equation 11 
and we modify equation 11 according to our needs. So we get m equals 2 over 3 gamma c epsilon f 1 half and then we are left with another epsilon f and we can write this okay 2 over 3 gamma d which is a function of now epsilon f and times epsilon f okay so we call this equation 12 and now if we modify our equation 11 in some other way so that we can get the value of uh, epsilon f out of it so how we do that so from 11 epsilon f to the power 3 half is now equal to 3 over 2 n over gamma c and we can write it uh, you remember the value of C we used so our value of C that we used was uh, V M 3 half over square root of 2 pi square H cut cube and we put it back in here So when we put it in and we solve for EF, we get, so we use the value of C equals V m to the power 3 half square root of y square h cut cube and when we put it in the Fermi energy value, uh, we see that it is proportional to the inverse of mass. So heavier the particles, the lower is their Fermi energy. And now we can also uh, calculate the number of particles in terms of Fermi energy. But before calculating particles, we, I want to just uh, mention the significance of uh, this uh, D of E and F of E, what they signify. Okay, so let's go back to the step function again. So this is our step function and if we now plot another function that is similar function but with some modification okay energy versus the product of uh, n of n of e and d of e what we get here
and remember this is our uh, T equals 0 Kelvin configuration next let's calculate energy within this uh, Fermi level energy of all states within this Fermi level so we get E we calculate E that is now gamma times 0 to E epsilon F epsilon T F epsilon times f of epsilon t epsilon and this function we know that is equal to 1 this f of epsilon function for t equals 0 k so we put the value of t of e and we get here epsilon 3 half c times epsilon c of t e and when we do the integration we get 2 over 5 gamma t of epsilon f times epsilon f to the power f uh, squared this is our next equation this should be our equation number 12, that's 13. So we have calculated the total energy in terms of Fermi energy. So if we put the value of uh, d of epsilon, that is c, c e one half, so we get c epsilon 3 half and if we integrate this we get the form of the energy in uh, the, this shape so 2 of 2 by 5 gamma d epsilon f epsilon f square and this is our energy this is the energy of the Fermi gas at 0 k now let's define our Fermi temperature so Fermi temperature we define defined in form of Fermi energy that is k b t f and k b from this t f is equal to Fermi energy divided by Kb so if we now put the uh, value of uh, Ef or value of Ef from this equation that was Ef 3 half we can call this equation or equation number A for example so we get EF equals cut square so 2 m k b 6 pi squared over gamma raised to the power 3 half n over v power 2 over 3 so we have a new parameter to define our Fermi level that is df So again uh, we can uh, connect it with our uh, previous uh, limit of uh, de Broglie wavelength so if you remember for a system to be 
in quantum regime it must have the interparticle distance much smaller than the de Broglie wavelength that you remember so if we now interpret that same thing in terms of temperature so temperature should be much smaller than the Fermi temperature for the system to be in quantum regime. And what that means is ka matlab kya hai? we should be at low enough temperature such that the interparticle distance is much smaller than the Broglie wavelength overall temperature is much smaller than Tf to see quantum effects this key a core important interpretation you have yes I am a interesting to study for some systems you come next lecture when they can get for some systems Tf is well above room temperature some metals hain jin ka true Tf jo hai wo room temperature se kafi high hai in that case when we study those at room temperature we can use the free Fermi gas theory on those on them actually we need no modification for that and so for the next lecture what we'll do we'll use this uh, free for uh, free fermi theory free, free fermi gas theory for thermal and transport properties of some metal and see how it goes in next uh, one or two lectures it's not uh, necessary that we do it in one lecture but okay it can go beyond one lecture so thank you very much for today's uh, lecture and uh, we will discuss this during uh, the, the coming week uh, include uh, and we will include the previous two lectures as well because you guys did not respond well for previous two lectures I mean not all of you <laughs>